Every state produces an annual comprehensive financial report. Right now, everybody is issuing their audits for June 30, 23, but the state of California is more than 14 months late. It was for the year June 30, 22. It's the only state that has been late. What made the report really interesting is that we have 50 states, 47 of them in the year ended 22, improved in their financial status thanks to the federal government providing funds for COVID relief. The three states that didn't improve were California, Alaska, and South Carolina. And the big story is that California's unrestricted net deficit increased by $47 billion. And there's a story behind that. The state auditor said, hey, we didn't report all of the money related to debts created by the Employment Development Department, which issues unemployment benefits. We didn't report it in the prior year, but we're gonna put it in this year. And that number is $47 billion. Which means that for the year end of June 30, 2021, we all thought the state was improving because it had been above $200 billion dollars in uh, unrestricted net deficit. It went down to 175, but that was false. The whole time it was false. So with the statement being issued so late, the residents of California and the legislature didn't know how bad the financial statements really were. So they've been approving budgets and they even put a ballot measure to add six more billion dollars of debt uh, by issuing bonds for mental health services. Uh, and, and, the, and the voters didn't even know, you know that, that the state was in such bad shape. In fact, it's in such bad shape that $222 billion is the, it is the largest unrestricted net deficit for any state in our country. There is no immediate impact, but you know we can learn something, one, is that we need good transparency. We're not getting it from Sacramento. They have computer systems that have cost the citizens over a billion dollars to do the accounting for the state that are not functioning efficiently. We have an employment development department that has floundered and lost billions of dollars to fraud that the taxpayers have to pay for. Uh, we have issues that should have been brought to light much sooner. But it just seems like we have a governor who's happy to fly to China and talk about how great things are in California, uh, who's happy to debate Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida to say how great California is. But really, when you, when you finally blow the sand off, you, you see that our, our, our state is not in super financial condition. And now we have a budget deficit, but we still have the same amount of debt that we have to address, which does not bode well. Well, there's something very unique occurring. The Department of Finance out of Washington, D.C. that oversees the unemployment benefits is willing to forgive some of these amounts that states owe to the federal government it could be rather sizable for California. So I think our governor is trying to be very nice to President Biden to make sure that perhaps this debt forgiveness is provided because the, 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 letter, the letter announcing the for potential forgiveness was just issued, I think in December and, and the first uh, pronouncement was in, in February, uh, but it's, so it's recent, but it, it seems to me that Gavin Newsom should not be making overtures like he would want to replace Biden as a candidate in the Democratic convention coming up, uh, that he should be very polite to Biden for this forgiveness of debt. So it's, they're, they're, you know, I might be off base a little bit. I don't know. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but I, I think there's something unique that we might want to keep our eyes on that and i think i have the right to question motives based on how poorly 
uh, this state is being managed. We've, we've just gone through a very interesting historic period where the federal government has been sending money to states and cities. And, and so they're seeing uh, their, their fiscal positions improve a little bit, but that's gonna change because the COVID era is over. The uh, state of California, if you look at their um, statement of activities, received $140 billion in grants from the Human and Health Services Department. It also, with that money, was able to have almost $19 billion in revenues in excess of expenditures, but yet we're upside down another $47 billion. So that's a real question about what kind of fiscal management the chief executive officer of this state is exercising. We also have to worry about economic cycles. And we've been concerned about a recession occurring again, like we saw uh, in 2008, around that, that time. If, if that happens, uh, a couple things happen. One is uh, revenues for the municipality go down. Uh, the investment returns go down, which means that pension costs go up. And so you have this squeeze of, of lower revenues but higher expenses, which then squeeze out other services. And a lot of programs will have to be reduced, eliminated, or perhaps um, projects of a, a, a structural nature, you know, building roads or repairing uh, deferred maintenance, those may have to be postponed. Uh, so those are usually the normal things that happen, but th there's also the large possibility that taxes will be raised, which get real awkward in a recession or in a down cycle. Uh, and, and I think in California, we're already taxed higher than every other state in so many areas, whether it's income tax, sales tax, property tax, that, that a gas tax, that, that the residents are, are, or as we would say, the natives are getting restless. That's just not something that should be done.